My name is Eske Villerslev. I'm the director for the Center for Geogenetics, and we are releasing a paper in Science concerning how the genetic diversity in present-day Europeans came about. We have sequenced uh, the genome of a 37,000-year-old individual from Europe, meaning it's one of the oldest modern humans found in Europe. And uh, this genome basically reveals three different things. First of all, and this is very surprising, we can see that all the major genetic components present in, in, in living day Europeans were already present in Europeans 37,000 years ago. And that changes the whole concept of how Europe was populated, where we previously thought, well, it was massive movements of people from outside into Europe providing genes. Now it is, it, 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 the data suggests, no, there was like this major population of people stretching all the way from Europe to Central Asia, exchanging genes in a very complex network with each other. And it's not this massive movement of people all the time going back and forth. The other thing we can see is that, that this individual is 100% European. There's no East Asian, genetically speaking, in this individual. And this means it provides a minimum date for the split time between the lineage leading to Japanese, Chinese, East Asian people and to the lineage leading to Europeans. So that is minimum 37,000 years old, this split time after people left Africa. And that has been a matter of great debate. Finally, we can also see that Koshchenki 14 contains about 1% more Neanderthal in its genome than living Europeans. So instead of 2%, it has about 3% and it's preserved in longer tracks. And that's because we're closer to the time of a mixture between modern humans and Neanderthals. And in fact, we can date this admixture to about 57,000 years ago.